LRBAquatics.com. Hello world, how's it going? Hope you guys are all doing great. If not, I hope it gets better for you. So today, we're actually going to talk about the fish that are in here. It's Doc and Sia Assimilus Mascara Barbs, which come from India. And uh, some of you guys were asking and wondering if I've bred them yet. Now, I have done a live video where I did show how I bred them, but... I don't think many of you have actually seen that video, so I'll go ahead and show you what I did, how I did it, and all that jazz. Alright, so this is where I've been keeping the mascara bar babies. It's in a 125 high. This is the one that's upstairs in my bedroom. Got Crip Balinese, Bulbidus, Hutilati, and uh, some water lettuce. Now, when I did breed the mascara barbs out, I had them with the hill trout uh, barbs, and then they ended up breeding over here by the rocks and then that huda lottie and with those hill trouts i really think it made them feel comfortable enough to breed a big reason why i know they bred over here is you can see the hill trouts come down trying to eat their eggs and whatnot i am planning on putting the red melon discus in here to breed because i think this rock would be perfect or just to give them space we'll see we'll keep those in there for a little while but I am planning on having another setup to try the mascara barbs out here sometime. And then eventually if I don't get that to work, I'll just throw them in here again and then we'll get some more going. But here you can see some of the babies. There goes a baby. Here's, there's some more back there. So they got stripes on them. And uh, as they get older, the stripes will fade out. And the one that'll be left with these guys will be the one that is on their tail. They're really quick. So you can see that guy right there, he's starting to fade a little bit already. I'm actually getting ready to take these guys out. I'm gonna put them in my BAP program. And I uh, get the points for them for my BAP program. But look at him, really cool. A lot of barbs actually come out like that where they'll come out striped when they're younger. At least I've learned with the Doc and Sia, that seems to be the case. Also got some baby rainbow fish, some uh, Glossolepis maculosus in here as well. And then that's a Bomanii. And uh, yeah, big reason why I've been keeping them in such a big tank, I did pull them out when they were smaller and raised them up from fry because it's just easier to do it in a smaller container. They can find the food better. But as I get a little older, start getting juvenile, I like to put them in bigger tanks and you can kind of grow them up quicker with bigger water changes. But yeah, I have bred the uh, mascara barbs. And as far as parameters, it was probably mid 70s. I don't think they're like too specific, whether it's like between 70, 80, and it was a uh, fairly neutral water. Once again, I don't think they care whether it's hard or soft water when it comes to breeding. Just, uh, you gotta make them comfortable enough to want to breed and feel safe enough to breed. And I think All right, so there you go. That's how they ended up breeding out for me. Now I'd like to go more in depth on this, but I really can't because there's not a whole lot more I could tell you about it because like I said, it's all about just making them comfortable enough to breed. I didn't really do anything special. I was feeding as normal as I would feed my fish, which is normally just once a day. I may fed them twice a day. They were in a QT and there was a lot of fish in there. And they are big eaters. But yeah, I think it was with the hill trouts being in there, kind of acting like a dither, kind of helped them feel safe in there. Probably as well with the plants and rocks and stuff like that. Now, I'm sure you could probably breed them bare bottom where you have like spawning mops or like some moss catching the eggs. That way you can actually collect the eggs more. But maybe think about having a dither fish for that to make them feel more comfortable. And maybe think about painting the uh, bottom black, something like that, just to make them feel comfortable within their tank. And uh, another thing with fish, a lot of people don't realize when you do breed fish, it does help to keep like the babies and stuff in almost little to no light because some babies can be light sensitive and uh you know don't always know which ones are or aren't now i do remember that the tank had green water in it at that point 
and I did have the lights off for quite a spell when uh, the fry were actually in there and had hatched out without me knowing at the time until I finally found them. But I don't know if that played a role in it or not. I don't really think so because when I bred out the uh, Dawkinsia filamentosis, I did have a light over them. They didn't really... Actually, no. I think they were in ambient light. So maybe that does help. I do know it helps with a lot of species, but when I bred the filamentosis, they were in a 125 long and actually had just Anubius with some driftwood on it and stuff. And then I moved that Anubius and driftwood into another tank, which ended up having eggs on it. And that was actually a clear uh, glass bottom. Didn't have any dither fish too, so maybe those aren't even absolutely necessary. Um, so there's multiple ways you can breed them. But they are egg scatterers. The trick is just collecting the eggs. That's the main trick is collecting the eggs or just letting the fry hatch out or whatever. So you can either do it naturally with like the musical fish method or you can try uh, catching them. That's kind of like most barbs too. But yeah, love these guys. Absolutely love these guys. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Have a great one.